In this episode, surprising news out of the Asia-Pacific region. We speak with Asa Salagupta from Thailand, and then we review what is going on in Europe. Bans, bans, and more bans. Welcome to the Advocate's Voice for 2022. Last year was a very interesting ride, and it looks to be the same for this year. The use of e-cigarettes is associated with an increased risk of heart attack, heart disease, and stroke. Reports say a French tourist was deported out of Thailand for possession of an e-cigarette. So I am now ordering the law enforcement agency to arrest anybody vaping. In Asia Pacific, a surprising trend has begun towards embracing tobacco harm reduction. In the Philippines, advocates are awaiting the presidential signature on their legislation that was approved by Congress late last year. In Malaysia, the Ministry of Health has proposed legislation for the regulation of nicotine, e-liquid and vape equipment, as well as implementation of a smoke-free generation. In Thailand, there has been growing interest among government officials about the idea of exploring how THR can be implemented. We had a chat with Asa Salagupta from ECST Thailand about those developments. Asa, thank you for joining us. My first question for you is this. Has the advancement of regulation for tobacco harm reduction in New Zealand, Malaysia and the Philippines had an impact on decisions that are currently being made in Thailand? The regulations in those countries have not yet played a part in, in, uh, in the legalization of vaping and uh, the, uh, it, at parliament level, not yet, but uh, the impact on social media and uh, the people, especially the senators, had heard stories and and the legalization in like like you said you know Malaysia Philippines and uh, New Zealand uh, so it, it had some indirect effect on on what we are doing right now in Thailand has anyone outlined any details regarding taxation of vape products once they hit the consumer market Personally, I said, hey, I'm okay with taxation, especially it's, it's for harm reduction, you know, for us, for people who we love, people around us. And most of the people say, hey, we are fine with taxing as long as it's not too ridiculously high. Then, you know, taxation is okay. You know, as, and then, you know, they have access to the harm reduction itself. They don't have to go back to smoking cigarettes. So we are okay with it. Yep, definitely. And what is being proposed for availability of products and choices in the market there in Thailand? From inside discussion, it will probably be some kind like, uh, I'm not sure, but probably like in some countries in Europe or even in uh, Japan and Australia that we saw. So, uh, quote unquote. I mean, if you want to sell like some, what you are using, what we are using, something like this, it has to be a specialized web shop, and that web shop has to go like that. There, there had to be some kind of training uh, for core system. It can be sold at like convenience store, so th there will probably be like what you can sell where and and things like that. Lastly. When do you envision Thailand having a legal regulated market? Soon. Real soon. The, the legalization. Uh, yesterday at the meeting said we have to get this done real quick. So what they are looking at is not something that is too controversial that, you know, they say, ah, we're not going to do it. Of course, there's going to be some health fanatic that say like, oh, we don't want to open new market for something that is even a wee bit harmful but you know we're not talking open new market and that's one other thing I, I stated yesterday that say hey you know you're not opening a new market there are millions of vapors here in Thailand plus I don't know how many more uh, 
uh, tourists that are coming in that are vapors that avoid Thailand just because they cannot vape. Elsewhere in the region, in Malaysia, the tax on vape liquids and equipment in their 2022 budget that was due to come into effect on the 1st of January has been postponed. Samsul Arafin from Move Malaysia believes that the Ministry of Health is making good progress with its proposed legislation to regulate vaping as a public health initiative, which includes measures for the implementation of a smoke-free generation. This will prohibit all who were born after 2005 from ever being able to purchase tobacco or vape products after 2036. MOVE fully supports these measures as they currently are proposed. The Philippine Congress has approved and sent the Vaporized Nicotine Products Regulation Act to President Duterte for his signature to become law. There are four possible outcomes now. The first is that the president signs it into law. The second is that he does not sign it, and then after 30 days, it automatically does become law. The third is that he vetoes the legislation. And if he does that, then the fourth remaining option is that a two-third vote of the Congress can override the presidential veto. Wir haben wir alle Liquid, was Sie auch gerne probieren dürfen. Es geht so einfach. Bitte schön. Outside of Asia Pacific, the European Commission is continuing their work on the TPD3 revision. According to Damien Sweeney of EFRA, even though the implementation of what will be the TPD3 isn't expected until 2024, individual member states in the European Union are going above and beyond the current measures and implementing even more restrictions on flavors and nicotine. Last month, Lithuanian authorities passed a new law on the vape sector. According to new regulations, all e-liquid flavors except tobacco will be prohibited starting on July 1, 2022. Rumor has it that lawyers will try to challenge this law. Other countries in Europe, like Ukraine, Finland, Denmark, and the Netherlands, have or are in process of banning flavors. Obviously, the authorities have no idea that flavors have helped millions switch off tobacco, and these laws are just going to send them straight back to smoking. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again for the next episode, where we will do a review of the situation in Australia the latest on the proposed vaping regulations in China, and the impact that may have globally. As well, we will do a deep dive into New Zealand's adoption of the Smoke-Free Action Plan 2025, which includes very low nicotine cigarettes and legislation for a smoke-free generation. So we are legislating for a smoke-free generation by making it an offence to sell or supply tobacco products to those aged 14 when the law comes into effect. Which is a prohibition on tobacco product sales to anyone born in 2006 or later. There are many questions remaining that demand answers. <laughs>